For July 26, we talk about mobile games and mourn our dead friends. Welcome to the 8th bonus level. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Smith. And this is The Level, a podcast for people who love video games. We are uh, a small crew tonight, but a feisty crew tonight. Uh, and so we're going to have a small and feisty episode, uh, a bonus episode. Uh, That's which is what a, she said. Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're not going to waste any time because I'm too cheap to actually buy recording equipment. So I do it on, you know, the trial version. Uh <laughs> And in the name of not having to stitch together multiple audio files, we're just gonna uh, jump right in. And uh, and we we actually posted I posted a multiplayer question before I uh, realized that that our uh, our uh, other co-hosts would not be able to join. Um, they're dead, and our end boss is going to be that we will eulogize them. So stick around for that. Um, but in our state of mourning, we are just going to do the multiplayer and and end boss, and then get the hell out of here. Multiplayer. So, so the question that we asked um, to get back into the groove because our, our Facebook page has been kind of uh, in stasis uh, for the for the past couple of weeks. Uh, the question that we asked was, "What is the most you've spent on a mobile game, uh, either upfront or just kind of piecemeal throughout the life uh, of the game, and was it worth it?" And we actually, I, I'm amazed, had a, had a really good uh, turnout for answers given the the short period of time. Um, although that's, that kind of happens every time. So I don't know why I'm surprised by that. So, uh, David, do you want to start out and then we'll just kind of alternate? Uh, sure. Um, Jeffrey Lawton, uh, Geo Law, the one and only, uh, <laughs> s- spent two ninety nine for Zombies Run, uh, which is abs- apparently absolute shit. Yeah. Shite? There's, there's shite. Uh, shite? There, there's... I I don't know. Like <laughs> I'm I'm yeah. I'm I'm not familiar with this title, although I really like from the title I like to imagine this is a game where like you play as a zombie and you are running, you know, from you know, I don't know Chuck Norris or something. <laughs> um uh, well, but, I- yeah. Given uh, the number of, of generic runners out there, um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was something along those lines. Yeah, I, I suppose that's true. But um, yeah, I, I mean, on the on the plus side, um, despite being crappy, you know, two two ninety nine is not too bad. Which I think is, you know, that's kind of the, I think that's kind of the appeal of the, um, oh, mobile segment. Um, uh, both for consumers and I think especially for um, uh, developers is, you know, you, you can try a game and if it ends up being uh, shite, um, <laughs> only out, you know, three bucks or whatever. But Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it, it's kind of funny you talk about the that you're only out three bucks because Chris Slee says that he spent fifteen ninety nine for Final Fantasy Tactics uh, War of the Lions. For uh, for iOS, which is a, that any other game that's like kind of a bargain price, but just by the fact that it's on the iOS, fifteen ninety nine sounds insanely high. Um, he uh, he goes on to say, but it's okay. Uh, it was money well spent during any downtime at work. I know some of the other Final Fantasy iOS releases are uh, that high in price, but I'm pretty sure I bought them cheaper. Who knows? It's way too easy to purchase something with one fingering of the screen phrasing and have it taken off some card of mine somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that basically, I think that basically sums up, uh, you know, uh, mobile games, Steam sales, stuff like that is. Yeah. <laughs> I buy things, it comes off some card somewhere, and then I end up poor because I have no. Yeah, that's, that's uh, but no, thing. no, I, I don't know. I I played Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, which was a really good game. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I imagine this would be a pretty good call. And this was uh, a full PS PS2 game beforehand. 
uh, PS2 or PSP or something like that. I, I, I it know. was it was one of the main consoles. I uh, okay. I thought it was PS2, but I could be wrong. But it was I think one I, of, it was available on the PlayStation Store for PSP, but that doesn't mean it wasn't there for for PS2. Sure, sure. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. That's that's actually that's one thing that um, I do think iOS has going up for it over uh, Android is that. It doesn't seem like there's some um, there's as many like full games. So you know what I mean, like full size games on Android, which mm-hmm. strikes me as kind of weird because you know the the high end Android uh, platforms are actually I think more powerful right now for uh, than the excuse me than the um, iOS, although not for long. Yeah, I think it's it's the nature of of when you'll be playing the things that you get a lot of games that that aren't really meant to be played to completion, but are just there as five minutes of fun whenever whenever you've got a moment. Sure, and and that is one thing about uh, that's nice about like a turn based tactical game um, like that. You 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 got into uh, Advance Wars, didn't you? Yeah, I played Advance Wars for a while. Yeah, because I I think they're kind of a similar idea. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, I'd, I'd forgotten all about that game. That game was a lot of fun, and you're right; it, it did lend itself really well to kind of playing for a bit and then putting down. Uh, do you want to do you want to read Murph's uh, continued thoughts on yeah, uh, on yeah. Final Fantasy uh, Tactics? Murph Murphy uh, uh, also spent uh, fifteen dollars on Final Fantasy Tactics, and he says, "As much as I enjoyed it, the price is a little high. I spent just about as much for Ascension." Uh, uh, for expansions and the like, but that was piecemeal, and I love digitized board games. The two mo- Whoops, I need to click the more button <laughs> while planning. Uh, the two mobile games I've bought that weren't worth it were uh, Warhammer Quest and Star Command, both coming in at about five bucks. Warhammer had potential, but just wasn't interesting in the end. And Star Command tried to be FTL, but wasn't in the worst ways possible. Ooh. Yeah. I feel like even just trying to be FTL is a good thing. I don't know. I, I That's another one of them. Just from what he says, the, the image of failing to be FTL, like, seems like it should be incredibly um, entertaining. Yeah, maybe maybe it's FTL, but it stands for For the Lost This Time. Am I right? <laughs> Can we, can we can we add in like a wah wah wah? <laughs> uh, I'll I'll see what I can do. But, uh, are you familiar? Uh, Ascension's not one I'm uh, familiar with. No, you know? I, I I didn't recognize it either either. So uh, to the ghouls. Ascension oh yeah I yeah. Uh, a, uh, a Wikipedia search for Ascension pro tip not helpful. <laughs> A.K. Oh, cool. a hit on every religion ever and most science fiction. And um, Kingdom of Loathing. Yes. Oh, it looks like um, like a card game, like almost a, a magic or uh, or one okay. of those things. I, that's actually something I'm a little surprised isn't bigger on mobile because, you know, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I got it for free, but um, Assassin's Creed – oh, shoot – um, Recollection, uh, I think might be the card game, is a, is a card game based on Assassin's Creed uh, for mobile that is phenomenal. Um, I absolutely loved it. Actually, you know what? Um, this is linked here, but the, the game I really want on um, on a mobile device is, is NetHack. Arr. Hey, this is Dennis jumping in here. Um, I am a dumbass, and I don't know how a record button works. So we actually lost the middle section of the show because I wasn't recording. Um, that section in- included some really, really insightful and deep discussion of uh, comments by Phil Holmes, who said, sadly enough, I'm pretty sure it was when I bought a Minecraft Pocket Edition for $0.10 cents when it was on sale. Uh, we-, we both agreed that $0.10 cents is an amazing price. Uh, we also missed Jala's uh, comment where she said that she's not a big spender on iOS, 
Uh, she spent 99 cents for Shining Force, which is an awesome game that I have on various platforms. Play it. Uh, yeah, and, and we kind of looked that up, talked about that, uh, and, and talked about long-running JRPGs in the process. Like I said, just assume it was it was super, super deep and insightful conversation. Uh, the one plus side of me being a dumbass is that we can include comments that came in a little late. So... Um, we got a, a comment from Robert Noakes who said he paid four ninety nine for something by CareSoft. Um, and we also got a comment from Matt Miller who said he bought an open face Chinese poker app for $6. But if you count the money I lost to my friends playing it, it was much more expensive. Uh, which, yeah, <laughs> I, I can definitely relate to losing money playing poker. All right. So, um... That, uh, that ends this uh, section. We'll jump back into uh, the, the rest of the comments that I actually captured. And uh, Cole will be back next week, so hopefully you won't have to deal with uh, this kind of tomfoolery anymore. Thanks. Bye. Brian, uh, Brian Russell Wade says, Whatever the world ends with you, solo remix goth. Like fifteen ninety nine. Uh, another game I've never heard of. The world. Actually, this one I know is pretty good. It's one one of these games I know by. I know it's good. I know nothing about else about it. Huh. One of the best role playing games ever designed for anything. Well, all right then. It's got a really cool art style to it. Oh, is this the? It's like a part anime, part Saturday morning cartoon type of feel. Yeah, it looks cool. I I have yet to find an RPG that I, I or you know a JRPG that I can really sink my teeth into on the iPhone. Uh, so I picked up a couple recommendations tonight that that might work. All right, any any closing thoughts for paying for mobile games? Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm not really. I wouldn't consider myself personally a fan of paying for mobile games just because, kind of like you said, um, the whole button thing doesn't seem to work. I, with them, I've, I've never really found one I could, I don't know, get into. Yeah. But it seems like it's, yeah, I, I think as our viewers have showed, it's definitely a big, uh, big market. And, you know, Angry Birds is definitely, you know, slowly taking over the world. Yeah, so. we, we didn't have anyone say Angry Birds. I, is that free on devices? Um, ah, I think it's, like, free, but then they do ads. I think, oh, I yeah. think the thing I, I realized recently that best, uh, best um, describes, like, the degree to which Angry Birds is taken over is I was reading a uh, reporter um, that was, um, you know, interviewing the uh, rebels over in Syria. Mm -hmm. And he's interviewing one of them, and he's got, like, this slingshot that's, like, chucking hand grenades. Apparently the rebel looks at him, and it's like, Angry Birds! (laughs) (laughs) It's like, okay. All right, then. (laughs) It's not, yeah, now... Now uh, influential in uh, Syrian uh, insurgencies, uh, resistance groups. Yeah, there the, we go. You need to you need to do the whole like wee hee hee sound every time you do it though. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. On that note, um, let's uh, let's move on to the end boss. The end boss. And now it's time for the end boss. Um, like I said earlier, you, you wouldn't tell it by our, the tone of our discussion, but we are grieving for the loss of, uh, of Cole and Ben. Uh, David, would you, would you be willing to say a few words about how, uh, how Ben died and, and how we'll remember him? Sure. Um, well, you know, as, as you know, you know, Ben, Ben is a, was a great man and, you know, uh, you know, he'll definitely be missed. Um, unfortunately, you know, as he was, uh, Walking, you know, walking the streets of um, uh, Vegas as as he's wont to do, um, you know, all of a sudden he witnessed, you know, an Ocean's Eleven style heist going down. And, <laughs> you know, thinking thinking fast, he you know uh, grabbed a uh, serving tray by from a nearby hostess and winged it at one of the guys, and you know, 
you know, jumped on him and tackled him and, you know, managed to, um, you know, break up the heist. But in the process, one of the, uh, you know, show tigers that are apparently running around <laughs> all over the place down there escaped and uh, mauled him and he is no more. So, so um, sad. <laughs> it's so sad. Um, but yeah, we uh You'll be you'll be missed, little buddy. Yeah. I I you know, he he always said the ca- the cats were out to get me and you know, it <laughs> turns out he may have been right. Yeah. Uh and and also uh, two people in the same week, it's it's so tragic. Um we we also remember Cole, um Actually, as as the Duckfeed uh, TV uh, independent podcasting network has grown, uh, it actually got the the attention of the podcasting union. Um, I don't I don't know if you're familiar with that, but um, I, I guess it, like honestly around these parts, yeah, actually. it's it's honestly more more of a podcasting mafia. Um, it's a podcasting mafia called the podcasting union. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, and, you know, Cole is just so dedicated to maintaining the, the integrity of, of, uh, of the shows and keeping them independent. They, they really stepped up the, um, the, uh, the pressure on him. I, I don't know if you could tell last week, um, but he was podcasting with broken thumbs. Um, you probably, probably didn't hear it from the typing. Um, he's, he's quite the trooper. Uh, but, uh, sadly the, uh, I, I got a, I got a note from him. I got, I, I got a direct message tweet from him frantically saying, um, you know, they're pouring cement on my shoes. I don't know why they let me still have my phone to tweet. And, um, that's, uh, that's the last we heard of him. And honestly, they, they didn't even need to put cement on his, on his shoes to throw him in the Ohio river. You dunk someone in there and it's, it's like an acid wash. Um, <laughs> but, but I, uh, I believe the, the technical term for what happened is he was Hoffered. <laughs> yeah, he he was Hoffman, uh, quite quite sadly, and uh, we'll be we'll be hoping to carry on his his name uh, on the Duckfeed Network as long as we can uh, before our thumbs get broken and we get encased in concrete. Yo, know, really, really with the Ohio River, the the concrete was probably a consideration. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is it with Ohio and like horrible rivers? I don't know. Anyways, there's I, it's it's the podcast uh, mafia's favorite favorite place to go. They make sure it stays horrible so they can uh, give send people to the Davy Jones's locker and the Acid Jones's lab at the same time. All right. <laughs> don't wor- don't worry. I I know a good. Um, I know good. Uh, well, you, you just got back from New Orleans. Did you yeah. find that that voodoo uh, practitioner? Are we we go we go make yeah. this good. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we can. The credit. Well, thank you uh, so much for listening to the this bonus level and uh, and grieving with us. Uh, tune in next week for something a little more robust. Uh, in the meantime, go in and check out all of our other shows. Um, you've got uh, Watch Out for Fireballs, you've got The Pitch, you've got Bonfire Side Chat, uh, you've got Dead Idea of Ahala, you've got, I, I don't even know all the different shows we have anymore. Um, I think that's some of them, most of them. I'm sure I've forgotten one or two. Oh, the, Those Damn Ross Kids, of course. Um, and, uh, and enjoy those. Like us on Facebook, uh, rate us on iTunes, tweet us uh, on, on Twitter, which uh, I am at DFuria. And I'm at MoneySmith777. And uh, thank you for mourning our, our fellow co-hosts with us. Mm-hmm.